You are becoming a Hindu. This must happen to the world. Or better that we call it Sanatana Dharma. If we do this one thing in this generation, that in the world, but I would like to see it in my time, you will become a Hindu. Many people think I am not Hindu enough. We call them Sanatani. In terms of geography, I am a Hindu. Because of that, I am a Sanatani. I want to see every human being, then everybody is a Sanatani. But don't think they are converting to your religion. This means you are a Sanatani. You will see Sanatan Dharma will sprout across the planet. I believe this is going to be much, much more in the next fifteen to twenty-five years where human belief systems will become very thin. People only believe to the extent it's necessary, already it is so. Hello? Only to the extent it's necessary, rest is all in your hands. You don't trust anybody. Well, I'm not encouraging that, but it's a good beginning that you understand, somewhere you understand, unless I handle this life well, it won't work. This means you understand my life is my karma, you're becoming a Hindu <laughs> So, you must understand Hindu is not an ism, Hindu is not a religion, it, Hindu is not a particular way of life as people are trying to define, Hindu is a land. Because of the land, people became Hindu. Because of the people, the civilization became Hindu. Because of the civilization, the nation became Hindustan. So, this needs to be understood that if you release human intellect, as I said earlier, from the influence of fear, from the influence of guilt, from the influence of extreme greed, you will become a Hindu or Hindu, maybe in your mind is… the context is very small, it's a particular type of people, no. So let's put it this way, it is called Sanatana Dharma. The word Sanatana literally means eternal. Dharma means not religion, dharma means the law. So the eternal law, what is the eternal law? Yeah, as we sit here, you and me are different. Well, they will bury me or burn me much earlier than you, all of you are much younger than me. But even after hundred years, if they bury you, you also become the same thing that I have become. Yes. Now the aspiration for you to become what I have become, that's a different thing. But when everybody is put back, everybody becomes the same thing without any problem. So, the realization that everything comes from the same thing, will it happen to you with death or now? There's a big difference. If you're aspiring that it should happen now, you are a Sanatani. You're aspiring for your eternal nature. That means you are the Sanatana Dharma, not as a religion, not as a philosophy. You are in tune with the eternal loss. Only if you're in tune with the eternal laws, the limitations of this manifestation, the individual manifestation has many limitations. These limitations you will suffer endlessly. No matter how endowed you are, you still suffer. No matter what you become in your life, you will still suffer because you are identified with the manifestation. You are not searching for its source, you have not found access to the fundamental nature of its existence, which is its eternal nature. Now, am I propounding, oh, there is something eternal within you, you are a soul and this will happen, that will happen? No. I am saying, you understand, you gather the body and you shed the body. Once you realize this, there is enough intelligence in every damn head here to see what is this about? Yes. Okay, I gathered this and I'm it's going to go one day. What is this about? Because this is not unreal, this is true. Your existence is true. These days, technology people are trying to look like sages with long hair, not hair, dreadlocks, 
<laughs> they're all trying to look like sages. This is a good trend. <laughs> they're trying to look like the Hindu sages of the past. <laughs> so essentially, a totally godless, philosophy-less, immoral, immoral is not the word, amoral. No morality, no commandments, no God, no philosophy. What kind of lousy people will they be? That means you don't trust the intelligence of creation. You think creation will be good only if some fools manage it. No creation is good without management. It is just that once, as I said, if human intelligence is not encumbered with these impulse values of fear and guilt and greed which is encouraged all the time, naturally this will seek its eternal nature. Yes. So what you call as the Hindu civilization or better that we call it Sanatana Dharma is a consequence of fearless, guiltless, greedless human beings. So, it is not because of Hindu way of life they became like that. Because they were like that, this is the consequence. This civilization is a consequence of that. But as all of us know in recent history, in this land when we say recent, we are saying thousand years ago. <laughs> in recent history, it has been ravaged like no other land. Uh, probably most of you do not know, because those who wrote our history books and textbooks, they wanted to be nice to you, so they eliminated all the ugly parts of our history, so that we may once again walk into similar situations. But the land has seen, the people have seen enormous atrocities, atrocities which are way bigger than anything that is normally talked about in the world. The greatest thing that we talk about in the world is how Africa was subjugated by the Europeans and how Adolf Hitler did what he did in pre-World War II times and what happened in uh, North America to the Native Americans. But what happened in this land, both in numbers and quality of torture, much, much, much more. But this is the only land after a thousand years of extreme torture we still retained our way of being. Yes, really, that's true. This is simply because of the way the entire thing was naturally structured. Because it was not a religion. There was no one head that if you cut that head off, everything will collapse. There was no one doctrine, there was no one book. If you burn it, everything will be gone. Because it was individual seeking. The invaders who came, they did everything possible. They killed all the leaders, religious teachers, they ravaged thousands of temples, but they didn't know how to kill it because it was in everybody's hearts and minds. You cannot kill that one. Because, because it was not a philosophy that could be corrected. It was not a belief system that could be obliterated. It was a natural longing to know. There is no way to curtail that. As I said, I'm repeatedly saying this, if you free this mind of fear, greed and guilt, this will naturally seek its eternal nature. Because of thousands of years of establishing that kind of thing, doesn't matter how much torture, it still lived. It's the only land which has been invaded with the vengeance or with the force with which it has been invaded, still retained its culture to a large extent, Damage has happened, but it retained because this is not the culture which is organized. It is an organized kind of chaos, intentional chaos, because you can't destroy a chaos, you can destroy a system. Hello? <laughs> you can destroy a system, but you can't destroy a chaos. So it doesn't matter what they did, it survived. A lot of people are writing books today around the world, many American and European writers, they're amazed how this culture survived. How did it survive? What is the basis? Where is the foundation for this? A foundation, that's why it survived. 
<laughs> because the foundation is in our evolution, the foundation is in the nature of our existence. The foundation is not in what we organized as human beings. It is not a church, it is not some kind of organization, it is not… There's one leader that if you kill him, everything will collapse. Do what you want, you don't even know where it exists, but it exists. So, if we do this one thing, if, if we do this one thing in this generation, that in the world, it's beginning to move that way, but I would like to see it in my time. If we move the society, if you move the world's population in this direction, they are free of fear, they are free of guilt, and they are free of greed. You will see Sanatan Dharma will sprout across the planet. This you must understand, Sanatan Dharma does not mean all of them will chant your mantra or all of them will do this, no, all of them will seek. That's all that matters. Which way they seek? We don't care. Hello? We don't care how they seek, as long as they're seeking their eternal nature, as long as they're seeking their ultimate possibility, we call them Sanatani. Because Sanatana does not mean a particular group of people, Sanatana means eternal nature. So, what is Hinduism? There is no such thing. There is no ism. People are trying to make it into a ism for survival purposes, unfortunately. But I don't fear survival, I only see a metamorphosis. Many people think I am not Hindu enough <laughs> because I don't know any, I'm not doing any puja, I'm not doing any mantra, I'm not uh, going here and there and doing what a Hindu is supposed to do. So what kind of a Hindu is he? Well, because I'm the, uh, born in this land, in terms of geography, I am a Hindu <laughs> because my longing has always been to know the eternal nature of who we are. And because of that, I am a Sanatani, not because I subscribe to any of their philosophies. I want to see every human being looks for that which is the ultimate nature of who we are. Then everybody is a Sanatani, but don't think they are converting to your religion, because there is nothing to convert to. There is no ideology, there is no philosophy, there is no God, there is no God's army for you to convert and join. It's just that, from its manifestations to its source, your attention has shifted from the manifestation to its source. This means you're a Sanatana, because manifestations are always transient. It's like a footprint, it'll be there today, it'll be gone tomorrow. But the source is always there. So once your interest has shifted from the body to the source of what it is, you have become a Sanatani. You're seeking the eternal nature. This must happen to the world, not as a religion, not as a philosophy, but as a natural longing to know beyond what is right now manifested because manifestations are many and fantastic. <laughs> but if you get identified with the manifestation, then you will become so small. Unknown facts about Hinduism. The video discusses the concept of Hinduism as a godless land, without fear of a god or hell. Hinduism is described as a land and civilization. The identity of Hindu is associated with the land between the Himalayas and the Indian Ocean. The pursuit in Hinduism is to understand the nature of the source and seek knowledge. The video emphasizes that this civilization is about seeking, not blind belief in a specific god.
Hindu pilgrimage in Pakistan. The tall hills in western Pakistan have been powerful kingdoms come and go. Balochistan province is a special place with a lots of history. It used to be a really important area for trading between different parts of the world a long time ago. People from different religions like Hinduism and Zoroastrianism have been lived there a long time and their customs and beliefs are still important today. And some people even think it's special place where gods live. Every year a lot of people come to this special place to honor a goddess and do special rituals to feel clean and free from their mistakes. It's a big event that a lot of people look forward to. Once upon a time there was a goddess named Sati who fell in love with a god named Shiva. But her father did not want them to get married, so he did not invite Shiva to an important party. Sati was very upset and felt humiliated. So she decided to end her own life. Shiva was so sad that he started to destroy everything in the world. To stop this, the other gods took Sati's body and spread it into many places all over different countries. Long ago, special places were made to remember important events to people. These places were very special to people who wanted to see a goddess and ask for her blessings. But it was really hard to people to travel to one of these special places called Hinglaj. It was a long and difficult journey through a desert. But now. Some new roads and buildings make it easier for many people to go to Hinglaj. This was changed the way people have done things for a very long time. In the past, people used to walk on a long journey to a special place as a way to say sorry for their mistakes and make their hearts clean. It was like they were exercising and working hard to make themselves feel better. It was believed that when they walked through the hot desert all the bad things they did would be burned away and they would feel pure and ready to meet a special goddess This made them feel peaceful inside When the pilgrimage reach Hinglaj they do some special things like climbing the Chandragup and the Khandeveri and volcanoes which are very red and interesting rock When you go near the volcano it feels very special and important because it's a powerful part of a nature. It's also a bit difficult because the ground is muddy and steep. It's really hot and dusty too. Some people even fall or get very tired and feel like they might faint. People who love and believe in the gods throw coconuts in the holes in the ground to ask the things they want to say or thank you for helping them. Some people also threw pretty flower petals while others put clay on their bodies and face to show their love and devotion. People make small houses out of the broken ground. They build walls and a roof just like a doll house. They do this because they want to have their own house or get married. After a long journey, the pilgrims go to a special river called Ingol to take a special bath. Then they go to a special place where the goddess is resting. This is the most important part of the trip. When Pakistan and India were first established, people in Pakistan mostly followed Sunni Islam and people in India mostly followed Hinduism. Because of the terrible events when the two countries separated, Hindus and their holy places have been attacked in Pakistan. At the same time, Muslims also face violence in India. So far, Hinglaj is a different because more Hindu people are going to the holy place without any problems with Muslim people. 
Hinduism is a really old religion that has been around over 4,000 years. The cool thing about Hinduism is that it's not just a religion, but a mix of different traditions and beliefs. Hindus worship many gods and have a lots of different ways of celebrating and saying. The holy books in Hinduism. Hindus have many special writings that they think are important instead of just one holy book. The most special writings are called the Vedas and they were made a long time ago, around 1500 BC. They were written in a language called Sanskrit and had special messages from really wise people. The Vedas are made up of four parts. The Rig Veda, the Samaveda, Ajurveda and Atava Veda. Hindus believe that these writings are really special because they are timeless and don't have a beginning or an end. There are also other important writings in Hinduism like the Upanishads, the Bhagavad Gita, 18 Puranas, the Ramayana and the Mahabharata. What is the difference between Hinduism and Buddhism? There are also some important differences between the two religions. Some types of Buddhism don't believe in the caste system, which is like a special ranking system. And they don't do all the same rituals or have priests as in Hinduism. They also don't worship the same gods. Hinduism and Buddhism are two religions that have lots of things in common. Both religions believe in things like being born again after you die and idea that your actions have consequences. They also think that living a good and respectful life can bring you closer to being saved and finding wisdom. Sanatana means something that lasts forever. Every religion wants to last forever. Hinduism much older than the other religions. Hinduism does not try to spread beliefs by force or persuasion because it believes that being eternal is part of its belief. Other religions may feel the need to spread their beliefs more aggressively because they don't have the same strong belief in their eternal nature. Dharma means doing the right things and following the nature order of things. It means living together in harmony and being honest in our responsibilities. Different people have different roles and duties in society and these can change over time. It's important to do our best in whatever role we have, no matter what we are in society. Listen to the exclusive Lord Sri Rama podcast. The link is given below in the description. Write your valuable opinions about the video in the comment box, like the video, share it with your friends and family and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching. Pranav.